And the scripture reads as such, Blessed are the undefiled in the way, who walk in the law of the Lord. Mm -hmm. right. blessed, are, blessed are those who keep his testimonies, who seek him with the whole heart. Yes. They also do, do in iniquity, they walk in his ways. Mm -hmm. You have commanded us to keep your precepts diligently. Oh, that my ways were directed to keep your statutes, mm -hmm. then I will not, not be ashamed. When I look into all your commandments, I will praise you, praise you with uprightness of, of the heart. When I learn your righteous judgments, in verse number 8 reads, I will keep your statutes. Oh, do not forsake me utterly. I read to you verses 1 through 8 of Psalms 119. Bless the hearers, doers, and believers of God's holy word. Amen. Amen.
you will direct our path. But we have to learn to trust in you first. With all of our heart. And not lean to our own understanding. Lord, because we trust you this morning, we can come and say thank you. We thank you, Lord, that you are who you are. You're God all by yourself. You created the heavens and the earth. And Lord, this morning, we just want to say thank you. Thank you, Lord, for being so loving and kind. We thank you, Lord God, for your grace and thank you for your mercy. Because when we examine ourselves, we realize that we are not worthy so much as to be able to gather the crumbs and fall beneath your table. So, Lord, this morning we say thank you for enabling us to flourish once again before your face. We thank you this morning, Father God, for a reasonable portion of health and strength. But we realize this morning, Father, there are those in our family, in our church family this morning, who are lying on their beds of affliction. Lord, we just want to come and lift them up to you this morning. You know them name by name and place by place. Father, we pray for those this morning, Father, that you would just touch their hearts, touch their minds, raise them up, O oh God, that they may know that there is still healing power in the name of Jesus. Dear Lord, this morning we pray for those who are weak in faith, Lord, who are inclined to doubt some of your word. Lord, help us to trust in you. Lord, we pray this morning that you would just open our hearts, that we might receive your word. And not just to be hearers of your word, Lord, but to be doers as well. This morning, Father, we pray that you would bless our pastor and his family. Lord, we pray that you would just guide them and direct them in the way that you would have them to go. Then, oh God, we pray this morning that you would just bless the man who was slain and proclaim your word, crown it with wisdom and knowledge. Lord, we pray that you would just help us when we go down from this place, but not from your presence. Lord, that our life is as shining, that a dying world may know that there is a living Savior. Lord, help us to be the salt of the earth. Lord, not to walk in sin, but to walk in righteousness. Then, oh God, we pray that when it's yours to call and ours to answer, we look forward to that place somewhere in your kingdom where every day will be Sunday and the Sabbath will have no evil. Lord, we pray that you will help us to live in readiness, because we don't know when you're coming back. But we know that you're coming back. And Lord, we just pray that your kingdom come and that your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Lord, this is our prayer this morning. Come into this service, oh God. Have your way. We'll be ever careful to give you the praise and the glory. In Jesus Christ our Lord, amen and amen.
of the Willing Word of Christ Closet would like to take this opportunity to thank Pastor Moland for allowing this committee to work and provide the most needed services to our Celine community. The Willing Workers are still in need of non-perishable food items if you would like to make a donation. Respectfully, Sister Louise Walmart. Donations needed. Give a little, help a lot. During this time is when we are usually passing out angels to adopt a child for the Angel Tree program. Unfortunately, the ministry has given out all the names before they were before they contacted me for greater peace. However, Garden of Hope is an emergency shelter for foster children in the Killeen area. The Garden of Hope's mission is to provide a safe and caring place for children ages birth to 17, who are entering the foster care system from the very beginning of their foster care experience until they be, can be returned to their family or placed with a loving foster care family. Unfortunately, some of these children stay at the shelter for a very long time, and they are in need of basic toiletry items. So if you would like to make a donation, there is a donation bin out in the foyer. Some items needed are shampoos, conditioners, lotions, deodorants, toothbrushes, toothpaste, um, toilet paper, basically any toiletry item that you can think of. You can also make a monetary donation and checks can be made payable to the Garden of Hope. If you have need any more information, you can contact me. At this time, if you would please turn your attention to the announcements in the bulletin. This afternoon, the Bible Way Missionary Baptist Church will celebrate the fourth anniversary of Pastor Will Jackson and wife. The guest speaker is Pastor Richard S. Lewis, Jr. of Unity Baptist Church. The program begins at 3 o'clock p.m. The church is invited to attend. If you would like to help further form mission and evangelism, you may contribute to the $5 of the month club. This will help support evangelism and evangelists to spread the good news throughout the world. I'm wishing everyone a blessed and safe Thanksgiving. Thank you. Those are all of my announcements. Good morning. Good morning. Praise the Lord.
glad they did. Now, anybody else can do anything now, but our majority in this day that I've never seen before, and I thank God for this day. Traditionally, here at Bring Peace, uh, particularly on Thanksgiving, we come together and we express our gratitude. Uh, some sing songs, some sing, uh, say, uh, uh, scripture, or just give a testimony. Uh, I know it's probably a pandemic, we can't, we don't do that anymore. But this morning, for about 10 minutes of my speaking time, I want to um, offer that opportunity. Amen. So for those of you who are concerned about time, this is just my preaching time. Right. Uh, yes. Amen. Let's take it out of my preaching time. <laughs> <laughs> Can't you worry about how long the preacher preaches. Bless you, my brother. Hey, but you bless. <laughs> Amen. So at this time, now, you can't go too long, about 10 minutes. If you move, yeah. amen, I see a hand already. Yeah. Amen. So it's for real. I promise y'all this way. <laughs> promise you that. Sunday school. And I just love my church family. And 
I thank God for blessing me, you know, through the trials and the tribulations. You know, he didn't say it wasn't going to be easy, but I thank him anyway. Amen. Amen.
I think it's just going to keep getting all those things count. And so I thank God for giving me my clothes, my life. Amen. Amen. Awesome is our God. Oh, he's distracted. <laughs> 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 I got a hand right here, brother. Okay, he's coming. I think this is all right. I just want to thank God for all that he's done for me and my family. He's been good to us. And um, through this year, like none of my family have been ill with the pandemic. And it's touched on the edges of not letting me keep saying that I'm grateful for that. And I also want to thank God for bringing my husband into my life. That's been a blessing for me. And I also want to thank David Peace for walking with us here. Thank you 
for the whosoever will. Now, oh God, help us, help me. I yield this vessel as broken as it is, as weak as it is. But there's a treasure in me, and that treasure is Jesus. Let us flow. I thank God for, for all of you great people. 
I, I thank God for being a part of you here at this church and having grown spiritually here at this place and among you. And the book of James.
here. I say I'm the last person to probably to, 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 should be able to stand here and particularly tell you how to live. Last person. But I go to God's word. And as I said in my prayer, he's not a respecter of persons. Right about it. And we say, we are, so we say that we are the children of God. All right, all right. Is that right? right, right. And, 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 and we say that we are in the body of who? Right. And Christ is the head of the church. Head of the body. Therefore, therefore, if all this be true, then God has a say so in our lives. Wish I had a witness. God should be able, since he created it, since he instituted it, God should be able to tell us who, what, when, where, how. Can I get a witness? That's what makes him Lord. That's what makes him Lord. Yes, many of us, we, we rejoice that he's our Savior. But my problem, I'm not talking about any of you, but my problem is when it comes to him being Lord. I said, he is my Lord. But there have been times, and there are times in my life where I want to take over. And now, a lot y'all don't want me to be real this morning. Maybe that's why I'm too long. Listen, uh, 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 he, he, he's not giving full sway. And he wants to change that in my life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I thought about it, and I think about it, and I think, Lord, oh, why you must love me. Oh, you, you, you allow all these things in my life, and you, and, and, and you know what's happening, and, and, and sometimes you move, and sometimes you don't. And, but oh, how you must love me to, to want me to be conformed. But, and to the image of your son. But what you know about Jesus, what's wrong with him? With, with Jesus? What little you know about Jesus, head knowledge, or experimentally, what's wrong with him? Now, he's perfect. In other words, who wouldn't want him? Even a centurion had to, in his moment of suffering and dying, even a, a Roman soldier had, had to admit, observing all that, that surely mm -hmm. the man would die bleeding, getting ready to pass out away from this world. And somebody recognized the dying man and said, surely. Talking about Jesus. And so James, in writing this epistle to the saints that he wrote it to, now my focus is going to be 1 and 22, though I may not get there. 1 and 22. Now I would say a very familiar passage of scripture. Yeah. You hear it a lot, don't we? We hear it in prayer. Amen. We hear it in our teaching at Sunday school or Bible study or otherwise. But pretty much anybody that's in any church of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ pretty much knows this verse. James 1 and 22 and then verse 23 says, and I'm reading, I'm going to read, well let me read it from the King James Version. It says, but be ye what? Be ye what? Of what? And not what? Doing what? Come on now, y'all go with me. If this is a little study, we'll be done. Deceiving your what? For, verse 23, for if any be a hearer of the word, 
unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass. For he beholdeth himself and goeth his way, and straightway forward of forgetting what manner a man he was. But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty, what is that? Hope we get to it. And continuing therein, he being not a forgetful hearer, but a but a what? But a doer of the what? Word. Work. This man shall be blessed in his deeds. And he goes on to talk about if anybody think that religious, but don't do certain things, their religion is vain. In other words, they can come after talk about that. First Corinthians says, if you climb mountains, speak in tongues, and all this and other things that they have, not You know what it says, right? So, we come, we gather, we listen. So that's what King James here admonishes the recipients of the letter. Jesus. 
So he grew up. He was the younger brother. Some say he was uh, older in the family. Some say he was younger. I don't know. All I know is that uh, Joseph and, and, and Mary had other children. Amen. And it's in the Bible. You know where it is. Amen. If not, that's some good Bible study for you. But James was a half-brother of Jesus. So that means he grew up uh, around Jesus and knew of Jesus, knew Jesus, but he did not believe in Jesus until as Savior and Lord until after the resurrection. It was after the resurrection. And then in your study, in your time, you go back and see that James was with them when Jesus told them to meet him in Jerusalem. James was with them when he ascended to heaven on the cloud. You remember when the angel came and said, you mean the God of evil? I said, he here gazing this same Jesus. James was there. And I suspect that when the uh, James was there when, when um, the um, when Jesus came back and, and they were all in the room talking about what they had seen and what Peter had seen. I believe James was there, but I know he was there in Corinthians, the fifteenth chapter, because it, it explicitly tells us that James was there. Over there, real quick, in, in uh, 1 Corinthians 15, and I believe it's going to be right around. Still haven't learned to 
hear your voice. I still don't know what it means. I feel my children answering my prayers. I still don't understand what that preacher is talking about. I'm still uncertain about certain spiritual subjects. And I've been on the walk. I confess that I've been on the walk a long time. Yet James confesses him, as many of you do, as Lord. That means he's master. That means he's in control. We sing the song, I've surrendered all. Don't you thank God for his grace? His mercy. No wonder Peter says in, uh, I believe it's 318, it's not take 218, uh, 2 Peter says, what's wrong? What's wrong with grace? So that's something that we have to do as children of God. I told this book talks about faith. There's no contradiction with Paul. I hope I can get back to this. Two things about this book. One of them is in uh, James 1.22, but be ye doers of the word, amen, and not hearers only. And the other one, I believe, is in chapter 2, where he talks about faith without words is dead. I got it wrote down somewhere, but I ain't find it. Chapter 2, verse number. What good is it, my brethren? Verse 14. Someone says he has faith, but does not have works. And here was the controversy. Can his faith save him? That's not a contradictory statement. Now, you go over to the apostle Paul, we know that Ephesians 2, 8, 9 says that it is by y'all already know it, don't you? It is by grace that you are saved, and that not of yourselves, it is the what? Gift of God, least any man should boast. For by grace are you saved. But that's not the end of the story. Listen, listen at what the apostle had to say. I believe it's uh, the apostle Paul in Titus 2. Three and eight. Listen at Paul. Tell me if this contradictory to what this brother is saying. He said, show me, he said, James said, show me your work. My faith by faith? By your work, and I'll show you my faith by my work. Show me your faith without works, and I'll show you my faith by my works. Listen to the Apostle Paul in Titus 3 and 8. He said, New Soulfield reading, This saying is trustworthy. I want you to insist on these things so that those who have done what? Believe God might be careful to do what? Devote themselves to what? Good works. Then he said these are good and profitable for everyone. And then in Ephesians, I think it's 2 and 20. No, I'm sorry, it's 2 and 10. Listen to what the apostle says about the good work, the works thing. He says, for we are whose creation? We're God's creation. Created in who? Children of God, created in who? Why were we created in Jesus? Why were we born again? Why did God save us? For what? For good works. Which God prepared ahead of time so that we should do what? Walk or live in thee. 
So you see, there's really no controversy here when James said, be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only. So he writes to the children of God, the 12 tribes, which are what? Scattered abroad. That's who he writes to. Wait a minute, I thought we said that there were 10 tribes that were gone. No. They, they, they wasn't really lost. But God dispersed them, did he not? God dispersed the children of Israel. Eventually, all over the world. All over the world. Now, someone said that probably the, the today's time is probably more, believe it or not, in Russia than there is any other place on the earth right now. But they're still, they're in China, they're in Europe, we know they're here. Every hemisphere, you're going to find Jews, if you will, descendants of the Israelites. But that's not who James was writing to. James was writing to the diaspora, or those who had been dispersed from Jerusalem, who had become Christians. They were now children of God. And now, amen, now, and having been Judaizers, scribes, many of them, Pharisees, some of them, and just religious, now, James, through the Holy Spirit, addresses something that we even experience today as children of God. He says, my brethren, all joy. That's crazy talk, y'all. Yeah, that's crazy talk. Count it all joy. Count it all joy when? Let me see what Schofield says about it. He says, consider it a great joy, my brothers. Whenever you experience various trials, Knowing that the testing, here we go, of your faith produces, King James says, patience, produces endurance. But let patience have a perfect work. But endurance must do its complete work so that you may be what? Perfect. perfect. Let me help you with that. I had to get help with it. Mature, incomplete, lacking nothing. Now, when I tell you, as I get ready to come up to a close, that I'm the last person, and I know probably third of you probably agree with me, but that's all right. That should be standing here, sharing the word of God. I did that. This one thing I know right here, that God is up to something in my life. You know what I'm saying? God is up to something in your life. And like my life, and how dare anyone try to tell me otherwise, that God does not have purpose in my life whether you like it or not. Whether you accept it or not. And you should have the same attitude. There is purpose in your life as a child of God. Predestined. Wasn't any mistake. I said it in prayer. It wasn't a mistake. But have I learned to become a doer of what I have learned? Have I learned to ask God for wisdom, who, by the way, give it liberally? You've seen, you've seen it all your life, probably. Little, very little education break every verb in the group I got sometimes. But when it comes to prayer, we 
when it comes to needing somebody to get a friend for you, buddy, with you. I don't see you going to the university. I see you calling that sweet, sweet old lady that you remember from Sunday school. But that devoted brother, that the majority of his life devoted his life to Jesus. And he lived it. Allowed God to use him to the point where others would see and know. That's God's man. That's God's woman. He is no respecter of person, but I know one thing. He wants me to be mature and complete. I was reading, I chuckled a little bit. Um, you know, when we first come to Christ, you know, we're babes, babes in Christ, you know. But he admonished us in so many other texts, including James here this morning, to grow up. Faith comes by 
hear and hear by the word of God. It's right here. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by what? So in listening, we got to be sure that we're listening and hearing God's word. What's the only way to do that, saints? I heard it read the word, know the word. I saw somebody lift their Bible. How much time am I truly and seriously and honestly before God spending time in the word? And I asked the question a while ago, a second ago, you know, why are we here? We come here to worship and listen. We also come here to learn and to grow. I said, I hope I get back to it. Now I'm going to get back to it. What Jesus uh, and his instructions, he says uh, in 2 Peter 2, 2, 18, I believe it is, or 3, 18. He says, 3, 18, thank you, brother. He said, but grow in grace. Now watch Christ get educational on you. He said, but grow in grace and, and the knowledge. These days and times, it's not just enough to have a head knowledge of Christ. You've got to experience him for yourself. And sometimes, oh, I wish I had time. I guess there's going to be a part two of the movie. God allows us to go through things. Another theme of this book is testing. The testing of your The testing of your faith. God knows what them Christians had to go through. But you know what? God knows what you're going through. Yeah. Especially, thank you for those words, sister. Especially in time and the time in which we live today. I tell you, it can be just, I, I, I don't have a cable TV. I watch a lot of DVDs when I do watch, but I got this. It is just this urgency. to see some of the things going on today. We are in fiery times. And I'm not talking about just in Kenosha or D.C. Amen. Or Houston. I'm talking about Hallmark Avenue. Because I was concentrating last night. The wife was in the room, all of a sudden, not that I hadn't heard it before, but Brother Barnes, I've never heard it that close. It's as if it was right outside my window. And I say, honey, get my hand off. She said, I am. I said, don't look out that window. She said, don't worry about it. But there I was with the door cracked, <laughs> trying to see what I could see. Didn't see anything. Now what I expected to hear in the next few moments was sirens. Never heard it. I'm gonna say about an hour, maybe an hour and a half later. Again. Bow, 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 bow. And it was like it was outside the window. I didn't move that time. I, I don't know what's going on. I just know when it comes out, it's either coming forward, sideways, or up. And if it goes up, guess what has to happen? Yeah, yeah. Gravity is going to happen. So I didn't open the door that time. And what I'm saying is, the time in which we live don't have to be far, far away. God protects us right where we are. Sometimes we don't know the stuff that he delivers us from. Just driving down the road can be a test. And God allows tests to come into our lives for a reason. As painful as it is. Hallelujah. Suffering the harder the suffering, the greater the reward. If you 
let it have its perfect work. God will teach us obedience, which we say, which we know, and which it says is better than sacrifice. We don't bring lambs, bulls, and bullocks, and goats, and rams, and doves, but we bring other stuff. We bring other stuff to take the place of obedience. I am. I let the young I am. And God said, no, obedience is better than sacrifice. Our example is Jesus. We're no Jesus. We're no Jesus. But he was our test. He was our test. He went through fiery trials. Look at what he went through. He was a man. He was a human being. So that's why he's able to understand what we go through. Because he went through. He was ridiculed, was he not? He was lied on, was he not? There was time when he was alone, humanly, was he not? There was time when he was almost thrown off a cliff. There was time when Satan tempted him 40 days. Now can you imagine the Lord letting that happen to you? 40 days and 40 nights. And you're not the son of God. And yet he held us. Who did, he hold, who did he hold us for? For us. He held us for us. You've heard the story, as I close, you've heard the story of uh, bridge builders. When they build a bridge, they don't build it, amen. Amen. To see if it will hold up. When they build bridges, they build it to know that it stands up. Dr. McGee, J. Bernard McGee, tells a story of a small town here in Texas that used to have a wooden bridge. One year, some flood wiped this wooden bridge out. So eventually, to make a longer story shorter, they came in with steel to rebuild the bridge. And he said, it was so funny, all 23 people, I guess that was the population of the town. All 23 people went down when they finished with the building of the bridge. But they did something kind of funny, you know? They, they brought two locomotives, not just one, but they brought two. And they rolled it on the bridge that had been completed. And I was curious, they was, why, and they blew the whistles that's what made them come. And so one of the bystanders asked the conductor or the engineer a question, why, why did y'all put those beef, uh, 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 locomotive on that track to see if it would hold up? They said, no, we didn't put it on there to see if it would hold up. We put it on there because we knew it would hold up. And that's our chief. God didn't send him, amen, somebody, to prove that he would not make it. God sent him to prove that he would make it, that he would not sin. Why? So that he could qualify to be our Savior. All right. All right. I had some witnesses in this house. He was not tempted. Amen, somebody. Amen. Satan had nothing in him. And yet he was crucified. He was hung, he was beaten, he was whipped. You know the story. All night long, and yet he willingly, not my will, but thy will be done. Obedience better than sacrifice. He went to that cross. In another place, James said it was a joy for him to endure the cross. And he's 
laid up there. He stood up there and he suffered and he died. Yeah. He died for the sins of the world. Yeah. He died for your sins and he died for my sins. Yeah. But aren't you glad? Yeah. I said, aren't you glad? Yeah. But that's not the end of the story. Yeah. That's why we can count it. All joy. I know you have to go through sometimes, but hold on. I know you're going through right now, but hold on. Don't give up. I know the pandemic is pretty bad right now. I know, but I know financial times are pretty bad right now. I know it's bleak right now, but hold on. God is up to something. Oh, I know he, he's up to something. My faith is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and his righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest thing, but I hold it in on Jesus' name. He's my rock, my solid rock. I say he's my rock, my solid rock. And I love him. And I know he loves me. And I know he loves you. Aren't you glad about this morning? Be doers of the word. For those of you who have, who have yet to take him at his word when it comes to your eternal destiny, get in a hurry. Get in a hurry. We living in some crucial times. No man knows the hour, nor the day, that he will return. But one thing we Christians will tell you, that he's coming back. Get in a hurry to receive the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior and Lord. Receive him by faith. Ask him to come into your heart and say, those of you who are listening to me out there on the airway, if you have not trusted him as your Savior, do so. Right there in the privacy of your own home or your car, you can accept Jesus Christ right now. He's waiting. He wants you. He died for you. And he rose again that you may have life and that more abundantly. God bless you as we have the invitational song. You may come today by letter, previous Christian experience, or by baptism. And we will receive you. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Two twenty three AM and two seventy four AM. Two twenty three, two seventy four AM. Solid rock.
traveling for the holiday, you raise your hand. Amen. I don't know. I think he's scratching his head again. Okay. How many of you know someone that's traveling? Amen. I see a few more hands. Amen. Well, I was going to give you somebody who don't know, Pastor Moran, Mr. Moran, will be traveling. Amen. So let's, let's keep them in prayer. Let's keep others that we may know in prayer. Amen. And uh, pray that you all have a wonderful, wonderful Thanksgiving. Amen. Be safe. Amen. Be safe. If you haven't got your third booster like I'm going to do, I hope you able to get your third booster shot. Amen. If there is nothing else, I guess you don't have to take the DVR today, y'all. Amen. 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 Thank you. 